The story begins with our traditional hero, Peter Parker. We get a recap of most of Spidey's best moments, saving people from the train, kissing Mary Jane, saving people again and again, and oh, let's not forget this. But this story is not about our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, no. Here we introduce to our main character, Miles Morales. He's basically your typical teenager. He goes to school, loves music, hits random stuff while going down the street to see if he could reach it. You know you did this at least one time in your life. And oh yeah, normal stuff. Miles is attending a new school. This school is one of the top schools in the area. Miles really didn't want to go, but his parents said it was the best for him. He tries his best to lower his grade so he could go back to his old school, but the teachers caught on and assigned him an essay on expectations and who he wants to be in life. He can't get any motivation, so he goes to his uncle's place. Here we're introduced to Uncle Aaron. Miles loves his uncle and really looks up to him. Later, his uncle starts to question Miles' love life. He knows his nephew very well, so he tried helping him out. Mom, find that girl. You walk up to him and be like, Hey. Hey. <laughs> no. Hey. Hey. Never mind. Leave the flirting to the experts. When they are done with that, Uncle Aaron proposes an idea to go to a spot he likes so Miles can draw his graffiti. When all of a sudden, a radioactive spider comes down. And guess. Guess what it does. Just guess. Yes, the spider bites Miles. You know what happens next. Miles, let's go. When Miles got back to his room, he starts to believe he is Spider-Man. But he denies it. He can't believe there is more than one Spider-Man. He decides to go back to the same room where he got bitten by the spider. But something weird happens. Miles witnesses Spider-Man and Green Goblin in the middle of the fight. Miles was trying to escape, but he almost died by falling down. It's okay though, because our mighty hero Spider-Man saves him. While Spider-Man was making sure he was okay, his spidey sense lets him know that Miles is just like him. He promises he will teach Miles how to use his skills properly later on. Spider-Man continues to try to save the city, but he gets stopped by a man in black and purple clothing. This makes it easy for our main villain, Kingpin, to open the multiverse portal called the Collider. Spider-Man tries to close the portal, but the Green Goblin grabs him and starts to put his face inside the portal. Spider-Man's face starts to glitch and we see other versions of him. In no time, the collider explodes and it seems like everything went back to normal. But that was not the case. Miles was still in the scene, so he sees Spider-Man on the floor. Miles runs up to him. Spider-Man gives him a key to stop the collider and tells him how to stop it because he knows he is too weak to do it himself. Spider-Man loses his last moments by trying to convince Kingpin that his idea won't work. I know what you're trying to do. And it won't work. They're gone. Kingpin loses his temper and ends up finishing our beloved hero. Miles witnesses everything and of course Kingpin saw him. Kingpin orders the man with the purple and black outfit to kill Miles. However, <laughs> Miles somehow makes it back to his house alive. News begins to spread about Spider-Man's death and his true identity. His name was Peter Parker. Miles continues to be inspired by Peter and buys his own Spider-Man suit. I'm going to miss him. He looks at the comics and tries to do the same thing Peter did when he was trying to control his powers. Jumping from one building to another. And this did not go as planned. Miles tripped on his shoe and fell down on top of the key Peter gave him. Now, why did he have the key in his pocket instead of a safe place? We don't know. At night, Miles visited the grave of Peter, but someone unexpected appeared. Another Peter Parker appears behind his shoulder. Miles unwillingly discovers a new power with electricity. He shocked the other Peter Parker, which left him unconscious in the snow. Once again, we get a little backstory for this Peter. He was Spider-Man. He did get married to Mary Jane, but got divorced later on. This caused him to be depressed and made him look like 85% of normal men in their 30s. The legendary dad bod. He came from a different dimension. When Kingpin opened the portal, he somehow got transported into Miles' universe. Okay, back to the graveyard. 
Miles gets spotted by the police, and he does what any other teenager would do, run away. He dragged the other Peter Parker across Brooklyn until they got somewhere safe. Miles thought he was doing something by holding him captive in his uncle's apartment, but that was no challenge for Peter. Miles told him that the Spider-Man from his universe promised to train him, but this Peter is reluctant to do so. Miles also lets him know the only way to get him back is by closing the collider, which Spider-Man gave him the key but he destroyed it by accident. Peter after hearing this gets a little bit mad because now he has to get another one. After a back and forth, Peter gives in and agrees to train him. They arrive at Alchemax, Kingpin's company. Peter makes a plan which involves him being the hero and Miles keeping watch. Miles refuses just to watch when he realizes Kingpin is inside. He climbs to the vent and warns Peter about it. While they both watch through the fence, they see both Kingpin and another woman talking. Once they leave the room, Peter wastes no time and goes and tries to hack the computer. When Miles fell into the room, he discovered another one of his powers, invisibility. They both saw that the woman was going to go back to the room. Peter told Miles the password so that Miles could save the file they needed while he distracts the woman. We then discover that the woman is not any ordinary woman, she is in fact another villain, Olivia Octavius, also known as Doc Ock. When they were both trying to escape, Peter was teaching Miles how to swing. It took him a couple of tries, but he got the hang of it. When everything seemed fine, Peter glitches again and loses control of the CPU they took. Doc Ock came back and caught the fallen CPU. Out of nowhere, another Spider-Man appears and saves both of them. She takes off her mask and reveals her true identity. She was the same girl who Miles was crushing on the school. Here is where we find out that her name is Gwen Stacy and she comes from another dimension. Different from both Peter and Miles, once again, we get a little backstory to her. Similar to Peter, she came to this dimension because of Kingpin opening the portal. While Kingpin was waiting for Doc Ock to come back with Spider-Man, he gets flashbacks to his family. He used to be happy with his wife and son, however, one day they both saw him choking Spider-Man and decided to leave. During the car ride, they were both still shocked by what they saw, so they ended up in a car accident, where both of them lost their lives. Kingpin was trying to open the portal in hopes of bringing his wife and son back to life. After the action, Miles, Peter, and Gwen decide to go to Spider-Man's house. Here we meet Aunt May. She knew everything about Spider-Man. She led them into his underground safe while exploring the safe. Three more Spider-Man came, a black and white version, Spider-Man Noir, a Japanese girl named Penny Parker and her spider robot, lastly a talking pig, Spider Porker. Once again, we get the Spider-Man story three times, similar to Gwen and Peter. They all got here to this dimension through the collider. All of them agree that they have to destroy the collider after they leave, but to do this, one of them has to stay back. Miles tells them that he could be the one who stays back since this is his universe and nothing will happen to him if he stays. The other Spider-Man try to test him, but he fails. Miles felt useless once again and just leaves. Miles goes to the person he trusts the most, his uncle Aaron. However, this does not go well since the same villain with the purple and black clothes came into the apartment. He almost found Miles but luckily, Miles was able to turn invisible. The villain thought that there was no one in the apartment so he removed his mask, right in front of the invisible Miles. Miles finds out that the man who works for Kingpin, the man who desperately tried to kill Spider-Man, the man who chased after him in hopes of killing him was actually his uncle Aaron. Miles attempts to leave sneakily, but his uncle notices and chases after him without knowing that he was his nephew. Miles believed that he lost him, but he didn't. His uncle was watching him very well and chased him back to Spider-Man's house. Back at the house, Penny Parker and her robot were able to create another key. Everything seemed well until the villains came into the house. Doc Ock, some Blue Man, and Rockman. Here we see all the Spider-Man in action, except Miles. Suddenly, Uncle Aaron comes in and Miles loses it. He tries his best to escape with the key, but can't since his uncle is right behind him in every second. Miles is about to perish at the hands of his uncle, but he decides to take his mask off and show his true identity. His uncle cannot believe what he was about to do and lets him go. However, Kingpin was watching everything and shot Uncle Aaron since he was not able to finish his task. Miles tries to get him into a safe place. Out of the commotion, 
he realized what he witnessed and breaks down into tears. Not only does Mal feel devastated, but also his uncle was embarrassed by himself. He never wanted Miles to see him like this. Miles goes back to his dorm and tries to run away from his problems. He refuses to be Spider-Man anymore. He thinks that he was the reason for his uncle's death. All of the other Spider-Man come in and try to comfort him. They tell him that they all experienced losing a loved one in their timeline. With great power comes great responsibility. Soon enough, they all leave except Peter. He stays back to tell him that they will not see each other anymore since Miles is not ready to destroy the collider by himself. Miles attempts to convince him he is ready but fails to prove himself since he cannot use his powers on command. Peter leaves him wrapped around his chair so he's able to stay up. Later that night, Miles' dad visits him and tells him the news that Uncle Aaron has passed. He also tells Miles that he believes in him and he is able to do whatever he puts his mind to. His dad's words give him courage. He was finally able to use his powers on command. Miles ran to the Spider-Man space where he found Aunt May ready to help him. During this time, the other Spider-Mans are already inside the Collider. They are planning a way to destroy the Collider without being noticed, but that fails. Doc Ock and Kingpin's men start to fight the other Spider-Man. When it seems that Peter is going to die, someone, invisible, starts punching Doc Ock. You guessed it, it's none other than Miles. Now, the real action begins. During the fight, the Collider keeps on getting stronger and stronger, making the entire city glitch. During the action, Penny Parker loses her robot because the Rockman pokes a huge hole into its screen. Penny believes she's going to die, but Peter Porker and Spider-Man Noir save her by defeating the Rockman. Back with Miles, Peter, and Gwen, they are all prepared to defeat Doc Ock, but luck was on their side since a huge boss knocked her out. Now, back to an important task, returning all of them to their dimension and destroying the portal. The other Spider-Mans go back safely, but Peter doesn't want to leave till they defeat Kingpin. Miles tells him that it's alright, that he can handle it. He can't lose another Spider-Man. Peter can see that he is now ready. Miles says goodbye to his mentor, and Peter goes back. Now, Miles has to destroy the Collider. This was not easy since he has to defeat Kingpin first. It seemed like Miles was definitely going to lose until he pulled out the move his uncle taught him. Hey. Miles is now dragging Kingpin around his web. While dragging him, he was successfully able to close the Collider. Everything is now over. Miles did it. His dad witnessed everything, but he did not know that Spider-Man was actually his son. Miles gave Kingpin to the police and now his duty was finally over. For one more time, we hear the traditional Spider-Man story. Miles now believes in himself more than ever. The movie ends with Miles listening to his calming song. But also a portal appears and we can clearly hear Gwen's voice through the other side. And that's it. If you like this video, please check out our other videos and hit the like button if you're already there. Peace.